All right, before we get weaving, we're going to need to load our two shuttle sticks with our warp yarn, Abernathy, and our waist yarn, Big Cozy. In order to do that, you need to take your shuttle stick, and I'm gonna start with your waist yarn. You take a length of it out, and you're gonna be working with this slot first, so you're gonna feed the tail in, and make a figure eight by going back through and around again, just like that. It helps hold everything right where it is. The other key part is that you wanna keep your fingers between the yarn and your shuttle stick. So you're gonna wrap around over top of your fingers and through the other slot on the other side and just wrap directly straight back and forth, just like that. You're gonna keep winding by keep, and keeping your fingers between the yarn and the shuttle stick until you reach either the top notch here or you have about an inch or less, three quarters of an inch is plenty of yarn sticking out from the side of the shuttle. In this case, it's the bulky yarn, so we're gonna go a little bit further than the fingering weight, just because there's so few yards. The reason you'd only wanna do three quarters of an inch or so is because when you get much taller than that, the stick is not gonna fit between the two pieces of yar yarn that form the shed. So you're gonna be, be able to squeeze it through back and forth so make sure it's smaller than that area. And we're going to tuck the tail under here to secure it. And then we're going to take our fingering weight yarn, which is our weft yarn, same idea, we're going to take the length of it, and we're going to hold it down just like that. We're going to make a figure eight around the top by going around one peg and then the other peg. And you can see here it's figure eight. And then again, keeping our fingers next to the wood you're going to wrap the yarn around the, the shuttle stick, just like this, up and down, until you either fill up to this notch, or you have about three quarters of an inch of yarn on either side of the stick. The next step will be to weave. So we have wound our shuttle sticks and we're ready to start actually weaving. We're gonna talk about the heddle specifically for a little while before we get started, just to get familiar with the basics. First, if you haven't already taken these markers off, we're gonna take the markers off because we don't need to see where the edges of your weaving is anymore. You can see that they're already done. So we're gonna snip these off with some scissors. All right, so our tension is good. The front has been wound, the back has been wound, and now we're ready to start uh, working the actual weaving. First thing we're gonna do is talk about the actual positions of the head all. This is a neutral position, which means it's not up or down. It's just right neutral, the yarn's going right through the middle. You're gonna to start to see, as I go the up position first, this spot up here, you can see there's space between the yarn. There's clearly two groups of yarn. One is the yarn going through the holes, and the other is the yarn going through the slots down at the bottom. This is the area we're gonna be doing the weaving through. And then we're gonna go lower position There's another groove down here. You can see there's another two sets of yarn. The yarn has gone to the top of the slots and then the yarn in the holes is now at the bottom. So we've just reversed our direction and this is what's gonna give us the pattern going forward. We're gonna go back to neutral for a second before we get started. The next step we're gonna do is we're gonna take our waste yarn, our bulky, our super bulky, or worsted, and we're going to weave a few lines just to even out these sections here. You can see these are the groups we tied. They're uneven spacing. 
and we're going to go ahead and even those out before we get started weaving with the fingering weight yarn. You want this evenness up here to be even down here too. What you want to do first is, it doesn't matter which position you're in first, uh, we're going to start at the top position, but you can stop at the bottom. We're going to start in the top in this example, and we're going to unwind the waist yarn just a little bit. We have the tail coming out the side, and then we're going to insert the shuttle stick from the right to the left, all the way through, like so. You pull it through, and then I like to just hand work it down to the base. Don't go all the way down. You don't need to go that far. You just get maybe an inch from the bottom, and you can fix that little tail real quick to make sure everything's down. And then we're going to take your heddle. It's also called the beater because when you move it down, you beat the yarn down evenly in an even line. That way it's going straight across. It's way more important in the subsequent rows, but right now it's a good start. So the next step, since we were in the upper position, we're going to go down to the bottom lower position. And we're going to hook it down below so it sits nicely. Make sure that your shed is clear. Sometimes the yarn kind of grabs on itself and sticks. Just go ahead and run your hand through and make sure that it's open. I like to undo a little bit more yarn I like to have the yarn coming off the back so it's like a spaceship with a tail coming off the back. That way, that way you make sure you don't have a lot of yarn slack and uh, you have plenty to work with. So we're going to go ahead and push it through from left to right this time. And the key going forward is when you have your yarn coming through, you're not going to pull it straight down like we did the first row. That was just the first row, the second row, and everything after that. You're going to go ahead and make, grab it on the left and then make an angle. What this does is when you beat it down with the heddle, you're going to see it start to grab and flatten out and it's going to give you a little bit of extra room to work with and it's going to make your tension even and your edges are going to start to pull in if you don't do this. You're going to make it go through at an angle. What this does is when you beat it down with the heddle, you're going to see it start to flatten out and that gives you a little bit of extra room. If you don't do this and you pull too tightly, your edges are going to start to pull in on each side. And if that starts to happen, go ahead and make sure you're you're going in an angle to give you more room to work with. So we still have to do a little bit more because I'm still seeing some gaps and then some unevenness. So we want to make sure that those are nice and even. Now you're back in the down position. Make sure that there's no yarn grabbing again. Go ahead and thread your head all through from left to right. Again, make sure the yarn tail is coming off the back. Again, angle and beat that one down as well. We'll see how this row looks. You can be a little firm with it now, just now that you've got a couple of rows. I'm going to do one more row, just to be sure, making sure that on the left side there's a little bit of unevenness. Remember when we did all the extra yardage in the beginning when we warped it, we made sure we had enough yarn so we could do this waist yarn section just to make sure that everything's even, give us some room to play with. So it's looking pretty good. And it might adjust the tension just a little bit as we go. Yep, that looks good to me. And I think I'll do one more row just to be sure. So again, from left to right, grabbing onto the edge, and then beating down. That looks really good to me. See, we're nice and even. And everything looks good. 
I'm going to snip this and I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail out just so it doesn't accidentally get pulled in as we're weaving the next rows. And we're done with that now. The next step is we're going to start weaving with Abernathy. We're going to undo a little bit just so we have some yarn to pull on and you're not sucking the tail in on that first row. So if you stop, and if you're not sure where you were at with your weaving, whether you were up or down, what you can do is you can go ahead and open it up and see, for example, this, the yarn is still trapped. I can't touch it. That means I wasn't in this position when I left off. So I'm going to go down, and now I can touch the yarn so I know this is where I left off. So there's no cross between my finger and that yarn. I can go ahead and go in the up position because that's not where I left off. This is the next step. So you can take Abernathy and thread that from right to left, just like we did earlier. You can go ahead and leave a tail. You can already see the size difference, which is good. Should be a difference. So we're going to go down and beat down a little tight just to make sure that it's nice and even. You don't have to do a triangle with this one because with this first row, it's you don't have the tension problem. You can just go ahead and go straight across. This second row, it, you want to do the angle because that's when the tension, see it's pulling in here. You want to make sure that it doesn't do that. So go ahead and loosen that up again if you did what I just did. And then beat that down. And you should see the slack in the line moving across and evening out. It looks really good. So we're going to continue in this way, back and forth. And then I'm going to talk about some tips and tricks. So there are a few things I want to talk about as we go. One, if you're working across, say you've worked a couple of inches and now you're out of yarn, you have a tail. What I would suggest you do is make sure it runs all the way across and hangs out the side maybe an inch or two, just like this one. So just leave it there since we're sewing a pillowcase, you can leave it there, it'll be on the inside. If you're doing another project, for example, you can weave the tail halfway through and then have your second line overlapping. That way we'll tr they're trapped in the middle of the weaving. This time we're going to leave the tail on the outside and then we're going to warp our shuttle and then start working across. You don't have to worry about it on the outside, you can just leave it there. Also, I would suggest, since we're weaving 25 inches, that you go ahead and use those stitch markers, the locking stitch markers we talked about earlier, that we talked about in the beginning. And I personally like to place one on the edge of the fabric every four inches. That way it marks four inches for it from me as I wind up on the front beam, and I can tell how far I've gone. I don't have to unwind it and look back. I know exactly how far I've gone. You don't have to go 30 inches, 35 inches. You want to stop at 25, which is where we wanted to. As we go, make sure you're keeping track of every four inches and placing a marker or yarn or some other marker as you go, just so you know how far you've gone. That way you won't get too caught up in weaving and you go too far. I'm just going to keep going like this, and I'm going to 
demonstrate how to advance the warp. Eventually it'll get too tight next to this heddle to get the shuttle through. You just can't do it. You go all the way up, you can't fit it through anymore. That's when you know it's time to advance the warp. You're going to unlock the front beam, this plastic mechanism, and you're going to unlock, here, I'll leave that locked just for a second while I do that back one first. I'm going to unlock the back beam just a little bit. You can advance it a little bit, maybe a quarter of a turn. Lock it again, come to the front, and then ratchet that forward. You'll see it start to wrap around the front. Make sure the tension looks good again. As you weave and have more fabric, your second piece of paper will go between the fabric and your beam just to make sure that everything's even and it evens everything out. You want to make sure, because you can feel that it's a little lumpy up here with the threads, you want to make sure the paper goes through there to make everything flat and not super bumpy. And there's one more thing. If while you're weaving, you've got to go into the phone, go make some dinner. If you're going to be leaving this for a little while, not a couple minutes or an hour, but a while, you want to make sure to take the tension off of your weaving. So what you're going to do is you're going to undo this mechanism here and undo it just to relax it. Because if you leave it under tension, things are going to get stretched and it will lose its shape. So you want to make sure that you undo the tension before you walk away. Maybe a quarter turn, just to leave it. It'll be fine. And when you come back, go ahead and tighten it back up and you're ready to go. So I will see you back here after you've woven your 25 inches. And we will go ahead and take it off the loom.